In this video, I'm going to show you the new Brevo Access layout. One of the first things you'll notice is that all the menu items are over here on the left hand side. Um, the account information is on the bottom left, or it may say your username. And it has three little dots next to it. And then those three little dots are your options for the account. So if you click on it, you'll have a few options here. One of the options is switch to light theme. Now by default, the Brevo UI is set to a dark theme. So everything here on the left is dark, everything on the right is dark. I don't particularly like it because everything kind of blends together. I like to have things separated. So if you click the little three dots again, switch to light theme. Now everything on the right hand side is bright and everything on the left hand side is dark, like a typical website. All right, so the first menu item is events. And if you click on events, you get your event tracker. And the event tracker is where you'll find a running log of all the events happening at the site or sites that you have associated with your account. So down here at the bottom, um, you can see that there's a log of everything that's happened so far. And I'll go into more detail on that shortly. But up top here, um, if you wanted to filter out by certain date, you can click the little calendar here and you can see all the items that happen on a particular day. Next to that, you have your event types. So if you want to filter your critical events, your warning events, or your info events, you would um, select whichever, all the ones that you want here. Next to that is your sites. So if you had multiple locations and, uh, and you wanted to see all the events happening at one location, you would just select that location and it would pop up all those events from that location. Next to that is your regular events or all the events. So if you want us to filter by um, failed access or um, somebody opening a certain door, uh, you, can, you can go to the events here. And then if you wanted not to include like camera events or events without video, you can click on these boxes and then they would take those events out. But down here is where the events will pop up. Um, the first thing you notice is your timestamp that tells you the time that something happened. The site time tells you the time that it happened on site. So whatever the clock is set to that location. Um, the event type. So like here, the camera picked up motion. The site that it's coming from. So it's coming from our ASIC demo site. And the device that it's coming from is our ASIC demo controller. And then if you click on the video icon here, um, gives you all the event details and then it will show you a video of the camera motion that it picked up. So as you can see, it picked up motion because I was working on the computer and that's what it's showing here. You could also add some notes. So if you wanted to add a note to that video and put like a description, you could do that here. And if there's any kind of user details, it will let you know right here. But that's all for events. So the next menu option is our devices. And if you click on devices, it'll bring you up to device status. And here you can see all the devices associated with your site. So for our ASIC demo site, we have one controller, one camera, and one door. You can see that the controller is online, the camera is online, and the front door is closed. Now, if you wanted to view a camera, you just click on the camera, give it a second, the video pops up and then also let's say you want you saw that somebody's trying to come in you can hit unlock and then that would unlock the door for you as well when you're done just click out of it that takes you back to the page and same thing for front doors so if you click on the lock button you see the door is closed but you can automatically unlock it hit yes to confirm and now that front door is open if you had multiple sites You'd, you'd see them down here, but we just have the one site. And then you can also filter by doors, panels, cameras, whether uh, devices online or offline, and then the site locations. So the next menu item is video. And if you click on video, two tabs drop down, and we're gonna go to live view. When you click on live view, it says view cameras by site. When you click on that, it's going to show you a live feed of your current camera. Now you'll notice at the bottom right, there's a flashing red dot letting you know that the video is live. 
Now you can click on HD and get the full resolution of the video. And then you can also click the little square brackets here to go to full screen mode. Click it again, go back, and that's your live video. Now if we click on recorded video, we can do a playback from your camera. Um, first you want to select your site and then pick the date and then the time frame. So we'll go to 9 a.m. and then just hit search. Now it's going to populate the recorded video during that time frame. All right, so the next menu item is reports. And under reports, we have report jobs. And this is where your reports will be saved. You have your report schedules. Um, this is where you go to set up a time or date to have your reports ran. And then report configurations is where you go to actually create the report. Now, now we already have the report created and it's who entered the demo door. So if you click on that, you'll see that anybody who has access or fails access, that information will be displayed um, in the report. If we do edit report, you'll see that it's all access and failed access on the event type. There's our name. The site is our demo site. Um, device is the front door demo, which is the controller. And then the occurred date, um, we'll change this to like today. And hit save report. Now to schedule report, go to report schedules. Um, let's see, you already have this one set. We already have this one created right here, so I'm just going to edit this one. Well, you give it a name, um, the runtime. Right now it is 105 my time. So we'll do 13, 01, 01, 10 p.m. We're going to do it as an HTML so we can just view it straight from the website, a web browser. Uh, you can do a PDF or you can have it downloaded or CSV file if you're using like Excel. Uh, email report, I'm just gonna do notification only. And then language is English. And I'm gonna save it. So now in five minutes, there should be a report generated. Um, but if we go up here to report jobs, this is where it will, it will get saved. I already made one earlier and I had it set to create a report at 1240. So you see it, it already created that report right at 1240. Um, to view it, you'll have an icon here. This is for a PDF. So if I click on it, I can open up the PDF and it has all that information right there. So it tells me who tried to enter, whether it failed or was accepted, what device, what site, and then the timestamp. Also under reports is the in and out reports. Our testing site doesn't have any in and out doors on the account, so I can't really show you that right now. But in and out reports enable you to identify which users have gained credentialized access to a site, which is in, and who amongst that group has used the credential to leave the site, which is out. Uh, for the purpose of the report, a user cannot be out on any given day unless he or she was first in. In other words, if the user has not accessed the site on the day of the report, he or she will not be listed as out. Rather, that user's name will not appear in the report at all. Okay, so what that means is, say you created a report on a Friday. You had an employee that used their card to gain access to the building on Thursday night. Now, the report wouldn't create it uh, in an out time for that employee because they never used their credentials on Friday. It was done on Thursday. So the report's not even going to show them um, using their credentials to get out because they never. the report never saw them use their credentials to get in. So they'll just be 
exempt from the report. So that's just some extra information for the in and out reports. Now the next menu item is users. So if we click on users, you'll notice a couple things drop down. Um, you have users, groups, and badge templates. And we're gonna talk about users first. Now under user management, um, this is where you have a listing of all your employees or all your users for the system. Um, like right here we have Jane Doe. So if we click on Jane Doe, you see that there's a first name and a last name box. You can put in a phone number. You can put in an email address. Um, you can also upload a photo of that person. On their custom field, you could put like any kind of custom text you want. So maybe like an apart department name. On the groups, this person is, is assigned to the staff group. Um, so you can sign that person to multiple groups if you wanted to. And then under credentials, this is what the person is using to access the system. Um, this person is using a key card and then also a four digit pin. Now, if something was to happen and you needed to suspend the user's uh, privileges, you can just hit suspend user. And now that person's credentials no longer work. So their key card number no longer works and the four digit number no longer works. Now, once everything was clear, you can reinstate the user by just hitting reinstate user. And now those privileges have been granted back to her. Now the next item is groups. And a group is a set of users with the same access privileges to one or more sites within the account. Meaning that they all share the same privileges and have the same access. So if you wanna give everybody access, you can create a group that allows access um, throughout the whole building. So let's say for, like staff, for instance. But if you wanted to limit access, especially for like visitors, you can create a group called visitors and then they only have access to certain doors or certain devices within the site. So if we look at staff here, you'll see that in the staff account, this is all the employees who have access to staff. So if you look, you'll see that all these users are part of the staff account and they have access to the front door demo. So everybody can come to the front door demo who's a part of the staff account. So if there are multiple doors, let's say there's like a back door, then you can add the back door here and then they would have access to the front and the back door if they're under the staff account. Now the next item is badge template. And what the badge template allows you to do is create a custom design for your key cards that, can, that you can use for all your key cards. Um, but what you will need is a card printer or some sort of um, like sticker paper that you can print directly to and then um, attach to the key card. Revo provides the option to customize the following. So you can customize the badge orientation, one or two sided, background color and or image, color, font, and size of text, as well as custom text fields, like first name, last name, job title, user photos and images, and custom image objects, and also bulk badge print jobs. Now Brevo supports the following formats for importing images. So make sure your images are either a GIF, PNG, or JPEG. Now the next menu item is credentials. And if you click on credentials, uh, two items will drop down. You have cards and mobile pass. If we click on cards, you'll see all the cards associated with your account. And then they can be assigned to whatever user you want to have the card assigned to. So if we take, for instance, this first card here, we have the card number, the facility code, usually when you get a box of cards, the facility code is on the, on the card box. The type of encryption, so this is using the standard 26-bit encryption, and who the card is assigned to. Now if we click over here on the right to view, again, it'll show all that information. It shows the user that the card is assigned to. It shows the card format, the number, 
and the facility code. Also, any recent activity the user would have done. Now, if you go back to cards, to add a card, you want to hit add cards. It's going to ask you for the card format. Typically, for most cards, probably the standard 26-bit encryption is good. You'd put in your card number, so whatever your card number is, and then the last card number. So if you're doing it like in bulk, and you had like 00041 through 000 like 50, and you wanted to add those cards, instead of doing each card one at a time, you can do the first card, put the last card, and it'll automatically generate um, all those cards within that set. And then put in whatever the facility code is. Usually it's a three digit number, and then you would just hit add cards, and then those cards would be generated. Then you would go through and assign those cards and the users uh, to whatever personnel needs to have those cards. Now for mobile pass, um, you will want to make sure that when you create a user, you have their email and their phone number listed and their information. Because what happens is when you create a mobile pass user, um, it's going to send them an email inviting them to use the mobile pass app and they'll have to have that information in order to proceed further the next menu item is schedules so if you click on schedule it'll bring you to your schedule list now we already have one called work hours and what this allows you to do is give permissions between a particular time and date so we already have one here named work hours so if you click on that you'll see that the group is the staff group and they only have access between Monday and Thursday from 7 a.m. to 4.59 p.m. Now, if you wanted to change that, let's say you want to give them access on Friday, you go to hit edit, edit schedule. And then all the dark gray means they don't have access and all the dark blue means they do have access. So if I wanted to, to give them access on Friday, I would just color in the time frame on Friday that I want to grant access to the staff group for. Then you would just hit save and now you can see that on Friday they do have access from 7 to 4 59 p.m. Also you can add in holidays so if there's a particular holiday grant them access to you could do that as well. Also the type if this is gonna be a one-time situation or whether it's gonna be repeating that's the information on schedules also you have the ability to print schedules so if you have multiple schedules and you want to keep like a log of it you can go to print all schedules and then it'll print um, all the schedules for you now the last thing to talk about is the activate lockdown button which is that red button on the bottom left and what this feature allows you to do if you're an administrator is you can revoke access privileges from a large number of users such as an emergency situation. A lockdown can be activated for all users at all sites or for only specific groups of users. When activated, lockdown overrides all schedules, holidays, and door timers. And when it's deactivated, all schedules, holidays, and effects return to their normal settings. All lockdown activities are recorded in the journal. So in the event that emergency did happen to occur, all you'd have to do is hit that red lockdown button and shut down your site. That concludes our Brevo Access walkthrough for the new fourth generation access control solution. I hope this walkthrough gives you a better understanding of their new UI and answers any questions you might have navigating the new layout. If you do have any questions or would like to see any future tutorials, please be sure to leave a comment. And if you like this tutorial and found it helpful, please click on the like button and subscribe to help support the channel.